All right, good morning. Let's start off with prayer. Uh, dear God, thank you for this day. Uh, thank you for uh, life. Uh, thank you that you are uh, here to accompany us in, in all that we do. Uh, thank you, Lord, that we are um, uh, here for your for your glory and, and help us to always remember that. Help us to remember, Lord, that you are a just God and that, that, uh, that that's just a part of your character, Lord. And uh, help us to be amazed at, at, at everything that you do. Lord, we ask these things in your name. Amen. All right, so it's good to be with you today. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, start. Well, actually, there's a little story I want to tell you. Uh, <clears throat> one of my favorite shows uh, growing up was the Andy Griffith Show. And I remember one episode in particular uh, where, uh, let's see, Andy and Barney uh, were going to church one Sunday morning. And uh, they go to church, and of course, uh, <clears throat> now I would never do this, but, uh, well, uh, Becky may beg to, uh, may, uh, beg to differ, uh, but, uh, uh, you know, I, I, uh, Barney uh, falls asleep, and the minister was talking about how we needed rest, and how we needed to do uh, this, and how we needed to uh, take things a little bit easier, and maybe not get so busy, uh, and you know how God intended us to have a life of, of rest and of uh, uh, at least uh, periodically uh, a, a period of relaxation. Uh, and Barney falls asleep, uh, and apparently uh, he forgot what the message was about. Uh, so he and Andy, uh, when church was over, uh, as most uh, as a lot of churches do, they had kind of form a line and they shake the pastor's hand and tell him what a great sermon it was. Uh, and it got to Andy and Barney's term turn and uh the the pastor you know extended his hand and um barney said yeah that was a great sermon uh yeah we all need to hear about sin uh sin is just something you can't hear enough about it's always good to hear about sin uh and so he was just completely off uh but he had gotten so ingrained uh you know about hearing uh about sin and, and things like that at church he just kind of automatically thought that's what it was and it really wasn't a big deal to him it really wasn't something uh out of the ordinary to them uh to him and so one of the th Thing that crossed my mind. It's just a funny story uh, to start with, but uh, one of the things that, that kind of aligns with the, with today's uh, lesson is that uh, a lot of times, I think, especially if you've been in a church for for a while, uh, you really forget about what sin is. Uh, you forget about um, the the importance. Uh, you forget about um, this as being a part of God's nature. Um, you know, not that sin is, but you know, his his view on sin. And uh, it's something that I think we need to remind ourselves of uh, quite often, uh, just uh, just the, the seriousness of it. And uh, God is there to forgive, and uh, He is there to to love us. And uh, but you know, God is is a just God, and we I think we need to remember that. And it's not something that uh, we should take lightly. And 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 things that uh, a lot of times, especially if you've been in the church for a long time, you just like Barney, uh, you just kind of throw back into automatic, and and you. You say, well, we heard about sin today, uh, but it's something that I think we need to think about. You know what sin can do to our lives, and and what um, you know what our reaction uh, should be to it, and and really what God's reaction is to it. And that's what uh, this um, uh, lesson is is really about. And uh, you know, it's a, it's a lead up into to Easter, and which is coming up in a couple weeks. And I think it's good, especially during this time of year, to start reexamining our lives and saying. Well, what do we, um, you know, what is our relationship with God, and uh, what uh, what is in my life that shouldn't be there, and and what uh, does God expect out of us, and and what uh, is it that that He wants us to do with our lives? So let's go ahead and, and start uh, in Isaiah. Uh, this is Isaiah fifty nine one through five, and it says, "Indeed, the Lord's arm is not too weak to save, and His ear is not too deaf to hear." But your iniquities are separating you from your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you, so that he does not listen. For your hands are defiled uh, with blood, and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies, and your tongues uh, mutter injustice. No one makes claims justly. No one pleads honestly. They trust in empty and worthless words. They conceive trouble and give birth to iniquity. They hatch viper's eggs and weave spider's webs. Whoever eats their eggs will die, crack one open, and a viper, viper is hatched. Wow, that's not a really, not really a happy scene there. Uh, and so really that kind of 
kind of uh, lends uh, credence to, to what we were saying uh, just a few minutes ago. This is something that uh, God takes seriously, uh, something that um, we should take seriously, and that's that uh, we should be obedient to God. Uh, I want to stop and um, uh, look back up at some of these uh, verses. Um, and I want to skip verse 1 right now, but I, I want to go straight to down to, to verse 2. And uh, we start down in verse 2. It says, but your iniquities are separating you from your God. And when we look at what sin is, and, and we can go back to the very first sin, uh, uh, we could go back and, and say this is what happened. Uh, but we can also look at our personal lives and say, you know, what is sin? What is it? Uh, what, is, uh, what, are, what are the consequences of sin? And really, the true consequences of sin is separation from God. And I think we forget a lot of times that God is a just God, that, uh, that he has a, a plan for our lives. And when we start um, uh, not upholding uh, our end of the deal, I guess you could say, but not, um, you know, not looking to God for guidance, but instead looking to our uh, own selves. And that's really where we get started. Um, in a couple of uh, verses later, it talks about, uh, you know, the, our intentions, our thoughts. And that's really where things get started is, is in our thought life. Uh, but um, really when we look at what sin does, it separates us from God, and that is the true uh, consequence of sin. And we'll talk about how there's a, um, you know, sort of a, a ripple effect uh, with that, but really when we talk about our personal relationship with God, what sin does to us, it separates us from the love of God, from the promises of God, uh, it separates us from uh, what God has from our lives, and it's not something um, you know, we should take uh, lightly for that. Uh, and, and really, you could look at sin as saying that, well, this is the, you know, really the the epitome of, of true death. And uh, when we talk about, you know, true death, um, you know, as as, uh, as Christians, we believe that uh, there there's life after this one. Uh, but when we look at, you know, what true death is, you know, if we don't have that hope, that's eternal separation from God. Uh, and that's something that we need to keep in mind and something that uh, really has eternal consequences. Uh, we have to remember that God loves us, and uh, we're going to go back up to verse 1 in just a few minutes and, and take a look at that. But we have to remember that God is a just God, and that God uh, that sin and God cannot uh, co coexist. Um, I think uh, for us, we get so busy, and we, we look at our lives, and we look at what we're doing, and we make plans, uh, we make, um, uh, you know, uh, you know the, what we're doing today, or what we're doing tomorrow, and what we're doing a week from now, and what we're doing a, a month from now. A lot of times, we forget uh, about that. That this is really a daily, and uh, in a lot of cases, a moment by moment choice. Uh, this idea of of who are, who are we going to serve? Are we going to serve ourselves? Or are we going to serve God? And that's really where sin originates from. Is the fact that we put trust in other things, and primarily. We tend to put trust in ourselves. Now, we may feel like that we're trusting in other things. We may feel like uh, maybe uh, we don't believe our, ourselves. But really, when we start putting our trust in other things uh, other than God, what we are saying is that we trust our plan more than we trust God's plan. And so that is when we start looking at um, things that, that can bring destruction to our lives, things that can bring consequences to our lives. And really, is the beginning point of sin is when we start looking to ourselves and our start looking to our own wisdom instead of looking at what God has in store for us and really for what uh, the things that he has set forth for us uh, that we know or we should know uh, that are the uh, part of the characteristics of God. Um, you know, it's so serious to God that uh, if you remember the the, uh, the, the story of the, the crucifixion that will, um, you know, is coming up, uh, we celebrate this each year. It's it's it's, uh, it's the basis, uh, really, of our faith and uh, something that uh, is important to us. But if we look what happened there, uh, Christ took on sin, and it was so... Um, uh, so against God's character, uh, just to even look on to sin, that he had to turn his back. Uh, and so when we think about the seriousness of, of, of this subject and uh, what how seriously we should take it, we should take it seriously because God uh, and sin cannot coexist, coexist so much that God turned his back on Christ who took on our sin uh, and uh, died for us. And so we have to remember that God is a just God. Uh, he has standards and we uh, even though we we try to live up to those and uh, we make a, a good effort sometimes to do that, we're always going to fall short because we're human. Uh, we are uh, imperfect and something that uh, we strive daily to for um, uh, to uh, 
you know, strive to, towards his goals and, and towards uh, what he has like, but we will fall short. And uh, that's something that we have to remember that when we do fall short, it's not something that pleases God. Uh, I want to read a couple of verses here uh, just about how uh, uh, how uh, of a just uh, God God is. And this is in Psalm 89.14. And it says, Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Mercy uh, and truth go before your face. Uh, Blessed are the people who know the joyful sound. They walk, O Lord, in the light of your countenance. Uh, And so this is just saying, you know, the the very... um, foundation the very uh base character and a lot of times i think when we get to know people uh we may have an idea of what they're like uh but we really when we truly get to know someone we know what they like what they're what really they're passionate about uh where they spend their time where they spend um uh, you know, maybe their money, uh, and we find out really what the core of their character is. And this is really, if we think about uh, God being a just God, this is the, at the this is at the core of God's character. Uh, going back to uh, verse, let's see, fourteen, it says, "Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne." and that mercy and truth go before your face. So when we think about God, we have to remember that we have a just God, and that's good news for us uh, in the fact that he's going to uphold righteousness, he's going to uphold uh, things that, that will bring uh, light to the world. But we also have to remember that you know we're going to fall short, and that doesn't that's not something that pleases God. And we need to be in the constant uh, state of really a reconciliation with God uh, so that he can uh, forgive our sins and, and, and move on. And again, uh, this is something that, that always has, you know, I'm always reminded of Paul Harvey and the rest of the story, uh, but this is something that definitely has a rest of the story, and we're going to talk about that in just a few minutes. I also want to read something in uh, from Colossians. Uh, this is in Colossians 3, uh, 25. This is, uh, and, and this is talking really, uh, and this goes back to the, you know, sort of the consequences of, of sin and, and how God views sin. Um, it says, uh, but he to who does wrong, will he uh, be repaid for what he has done? And there is no partiality. So in one sense, you know, that's good that God um, is unbiased, he's uh, impartial, uh, but that means that we are also held to that standard. Uh, and so we have to remember that we serve a just God, the God that, uh, that, has a, a plan and uh, has a um, that that you know has something for us, uh, but it's something that we need to uh, make sure that we are uh, in a reli- uh, right relationship with God, making sure that we are uh, walking along that path. You know, God says that the path is narrow, uh, and so that we have to remember that um, you know He has standards that we want to uphold. Um, if we go into verse three, uh, it says, uh, "For your hands." are defiled with blood and your fingers and iniquity, your lips have spoken lies and your tongues uh, mutter uh, injustice. Uh, that's not that's not a pretty picture. Um, but um, it's usually, uh, if we look at the sort of the imagery uh, that we have um, looked at here, it says uh, this is uh, usually reserved for the worst of the worst. Uh, and when I was thinking about that, I was like, oh man, somebody, somebody really messed up there. Uh, you know, th- this is really describing someone who has messed up big time, someone who has really done something wrong. Uh, but then I thought, well, that's us. Uh, and that's us on a daily basis. Uh, we have fallen short. All of us have fallen short of, of God's glory. And we have committed all sins. Um, and uh, you have to remember that uh, God says if you've broken one of these, that you've broken them all. And I think it's easy a lot of times to look at other people, uh, to look at, um, uh, you know, maybe uh, categorize uh, categorize sin and say this is in this category, this is in that category. But we have to remember, you know, what does God look at? Uh, God looks at the heart. Uh, and so if we've even uh, thought about some of these things, uh, which we, we all have, uh, then that's something that uh, God says is a sin. And that's something that we need to be careful about, not to point fingers at others, but say, you know, this is something that I'm struggling with, struggling with and something that God can uh, uh, take from us. And, and we are all thankful that, that God has uh, provided a way for forgiveness and, and for reconciliation uh, with him. I was thinking about this idea of, of the fact that we have all, you know, all committed all sins. Um, and I was thinking about uh, how God looks at the heart. And I was thinking primarily about uh, two, two, uh, 
two different and uh, very different uh, ways of, of looking at this. Uh, and one way uh, that's very comforting um, for us, that God doesn't look on outer appearances, that he doesn't look uh, at what we typically hold as important. We don't. Uh, he doesn't look at the things that maybe look shiny to us. Uh, he looks past that. Uh, I'm thinking about when uh, when, when David was chosen as king and uh, God, uh, you know, Samuel was going and, and uh, trying to choose out the, the, the right one. And I was like, no, not this one. No, not that one. No, not that one. And, and you know, before uh, he got to the end, he's like, well, well but these are kind of all the good ones, right? These are all the kingly ones. These are the ones that, uh, you know, kind of uh, fit the job application. Uh, uh, but remember what happened, you know, Davy, uh, David was this young uh, person and he was uh, out doing uh, something that, um, you know, even maybe the, the other brothers had outgrown at that point. Uh, but what did God say? He said, I look on the heart. I look on, you know, what your motivations are. Uh, and so in one respect, you know, that's good that God looks at us and, and he doesn't see the things that, that maybe um, that we've done that are on the outside, uh, things that maybe we do uh, privately that, that please him. And so that's something that, that I, we can take heart in. But then I thought about, you know, it kind of it's, it's a double edged sword in some cases. It's a it's a two sided coin in some cases, because on the other side, we have the Pharisees, right? So they were, uh, they said all the right things. They they seemingly said all the right things. They'd been religious for all their life. Uh, they had done um, what most of us would consider to be living by the rules. Uh, but what God God reserved really, or Christ reserved uh, really, his most. Um, I, I don't want to say vicious, but his most uh, critical words really for, for those people. Uh, and so, you know, why was that? Because God knew how, uh, how their heart was, the fact that they were doing, seemingly doing all the right things, but they were, um, they were being uh, very hypocritical uh, in what they were doing. And so we have, to be, we have to be knowledgeable that the fact that God looks at our heart and if there's something there that doesn't belong, we can't hide that from God. We can do all the right things. Uh, we can look like we're doing all the right things, but God knows where, um, where our heart is and that's where he's going to judge. Uh, and I think that's something that we, can, uh, that we need to, to, to remember. Uh, again, on the on the flip side of that, uh, I think if our heart is on the right place, even though uh, it may not seem like we're doing anything great, I think God is going to reward that. Now, let's go back. Uh, I was thinking about um, sort of the the rest of the story here. Uh, so. Uh, I guess that you know that's the bad news uh, that we just talked about. You know what about the good news? And going up to verse one, uh, it says, "Indeed, the the Lord's arm is not too weak to save, and His ear is not too deaf to hear." Uh, and I was thinking about you know God is always reaching out to us. Uh, we do our best. Uh, I think uh, at least I do. Uh, I do my best to to walk away from God uh, and and to do things that that um, even though they seem wise in my own eyes are, are not uh, what God wants me to do. And so God. But the good news is that God is always reaching out to us and He's always willing to be there for us. And I was thinking about uh, I have a, a list of regardless. Uh, uh, items and so God is always reaching out to us regardless of our past. Um, you know, if you've done something that that other people would judge you for, if if you've done something that maybe seem embarrassing, if if something uh, seems not um, uh, something that that you know you would not, not really brag about, God is always reaching out to us regardless of that. Um, he's regard he's reaching out uh, to us regardless of how busy we get. Sometimes we get just so busy that we forget about him. We forget about what he has for our lives. Uh, and uh, we have to remember uh, that he's always willing. And I think um, it's easy to, to even get busy doing good things. Uh, but God wants a relationship with us. And remember, he looks at our heart. He wants to, our hearts to be in the right place, not necessarily uh, to for us to cover that up with the things that we do, but he wants the things that are that we do to be reflective of what's coming out of our heart. Uh, he wants us to be. Uh, he's reaching out to us regardless of our intentions and our plans. Um, you know, I'm a, I'm a planner, and um, some of my plans are you know man. They're just fantastic when I start, but man, they fall apart pretty quick. And a lot of times when that happens, uh, it's because I've forgotten to include God. And so we need to remember to, to include God uh, in, in our plans and ask God what his plans are for our life and to make sure that we are 
uh, you know, that we are um, uh, following him and that we don't forget about him and that when we look at our intentions and we look at our plans that we think about what does God want us to do instead of what do we want to do. Hopefully so, a lot of times if, if God is working our lives, those two will, will overlap with each other and that's, that's fantastic. A lot of times whatever, um, you know, we have, to, we have to sacrifice ourselves daily and we have to say, well, Christ is, uh, Christ, you know, I feel like uh, Christ wants me to do this, but man, it's really, this is where I want to go. This is what makes sense to me. And we have to remember that a lot of times those plans don't work out very well because we only have a compl- uh, an incomplete picture of, of the puzzle. Uh, and God knows uh, everything. And I know that uh, there have been a lot of times when I've looked at things and, and been really confused about things that have happened, uh, been really confused about uh, the the direction that that thing seemed to take, uh, but but years later I may look back and say, oh, I am now, and um, we don't understand things the the way that uh, God is working in the present. Um, sometimes that that's good uh, because uh, He knows what's best for us, and uh, we have limited um, visibility uh, when when it when it uh, comes to the future and knowing what's best for our lives. Um, Going on, it says uh, God is, um, his ear is, is not too deaf to hear. Uh, and so God is always uh, ready to hear us. And, uh, you know, that takes attention. Uh, if, you, if you ever uh, maybe get frustrated at somebody because they're, you don't think they're listening to you, um, you know, that takes focus. Uh, and the frustration is that they actually not, you know, they're not hearing you. Uh, what you're frustrated at is the fact that uh, they're not uh, focusing on you. The fact that they are giving attention to something else and you're not getting your point across to them. But when, we, when it says here that God is uh, in his ear is not too deaf to hear, that tells me that he is willing to put his attention on us. Uh, and that the fact, you know, if past uh, uh, examples, you know, from, from dying for us isn't enough, uh, you know, God is willing uh, to definitely put his attention back on us. And he's willing to, uh, to focus on us. And he's willing to work on us. And he, uh, uh, remember, Scripture compares our lives to uh, a sort of like a project uh, that, that uh, God is working on. Improving, continually refining, continually, uh, you know, adjusting. Uh, no matter how painful those may be to us, uh, God is doing that, and that means that He is paying attention to us. He cares enough about us that He is going to do the best work He can, and He's going to do the best work that we will allow Him to do. Um, you know, unfortunately, I think the case is a lot of times that we are the ones that that don't hear. Um, you know, even though He's almost there, and and uh, if you read a lot of scripture, you almost sense a desperation uh, that God has for a relationship with us. And I think that um, it's, uh, it's unfortunate that it's, it's us uh, who, who uh, walk away from God. And it's, it's us uh, that don't hear from God. And it's us that really uh, turn away from God. Um, and the question that, that I keep asking, have to ask to myself, you know, are we truly listening for what God has for our lives? Uh, I'm going to read just a, a couple more. Uh, this is in uh, Psalm 86, 5. It says, uh, For you, Lord... Actually, I'm going to back up to verse 1. It says, Bow down your ear, O Lord, hear me, for I am poor and needy. Uh, preserve my life, for I am holy. You are my God. Save your servant who trusts in you. Be merciful to, uh, merciful to me, O Lord, for I cry to you all day long. Rejoice the soul of your servant, for to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. For you, Lord, are good and ready to forgive. And abundant in mercy to all those who call upon you. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer and attend to the voice of my supplications. In the day of my trouble, I will call upon you, for you will answer me. So he is always there. He is waiting for us. He is, uh, he is uh, you know, sometimes I, I get the, the idea that he is just absolutely desperate uh, for a relationship for us. And we can see that, the fact that he died for us. Uh, and so he is there. He is uh, waiting for us. Uh, and again, I think it's a, a lot of times uh, us who turn our, well, actually it's all the time, us who turn our backs on God and not the other way around. Uh, I'm going to read one more thing in James. Uh, 
Uh, this is in uh, James 4, 8. And this is uh, really the, the good news uh, about uh, the, the fact that sometimes we feel lost and we can, you know, even the previous passage we, we read, um, it's not really something that uh, the, the psalmist was having a good time and, and partying or anything like that. Uh, he's saying, you know, things are rough, but I trust God and I know God will listen to me. Uh, this is uh, this is the good news uh, here about you know our uh, if we if we accept God's invitation to us that says draw near to God and He will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts. Uh, and it goes on um, and it talks about really being in a spirit of of repentance and actually saying this is where I went wrong and this is where I want to turn around and and do things uh, better you know to the best of my ability. But there's a promise there. That if we draw near to God, if we ask God to draw near to, to, if we ask God to draw near to us, He's not going to refuse that. He's going to welcome that, and He's going to fill our lives and our hearts uh, with love, and He's going to fill our hearts with promise and hope, uh, and He's going to give us wisdom to make uh, tough decisions sometimes. Uh, so hopefully that gives us, uh, you know, a, a good lead-in uh, to the to the Easter season. Uh, the fact that God. Um, doesn't like sin, and the, but the, there's a promise. There's a rest of the story there that God is always willing to reconcile our relationship, is always willing to forgive us, and uh, regardless of how sinful we are, God is ready to draw near to us. Uh, and all it takes is the fact that we, um, that we accept uh, that promise. All right, so it's been good with you, uh, uh, good to be with you. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear God, thank you for this day. Thank you for all that you've done. Uh, thank you, Lord, that um, you have a plan for our lives. Thank you, Lord, that you have laid that out. And thank you, Lord, that um, uh, regardless if we see uh, where it's been laid out, uh, Lord, you know that it has been. Uh, thank you, Lord, that um, you are a good God, a just God. Uh, help us to remember that. Remember that you're a holy God and that um, that uh, you have, uh, uh, that you just... Um, you want the best for us, Lord. Uh, help us to always remember that. Help us to remember also, Lord, that when we fall down, you are there to pick us up. And uh, that we are we are new creations, Lord, that the old things have gone away and, and that uh, we can be new in you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you look on our... Um, the, the fact that we're that we're new and uh, Lord that that you f you know you forgive and you forget uh, but Lord even better than that you can use the things where we've fallen short Lord we ask these things in your name Amen All right have a great week.